Hello. Today I thought I would take you into one of my studios. This one is a converted garage that we use as a studio for some of our stonework. And I thought I'd show you a few ways and a few things that we work with, including Rob Stone, silicon and resin all in the one project. So what we're going to make at the end of this tutorial is a lip tube filling tray that looks something like this one. It's made out of a resin, a, a firm resin, and I'll show you how we go through this step by step. I won't show you all the steps, but I'll just show you how I create it. It's not the only way, but this is what I do. So first of all, I would create my original product that I wanted to replicate. So with these ones, I hand carved these out of stone originally. Once that's made, you can make a border around it and pour silicon over it. And I'll show you how to do that in another video. And then once you've got that, you can take the silicon master and make a stone master from that. I use this really cool product. It's called Rob Stone and you can buy it online. Uh, there's a few others that you could do, but that's the one I use. It's, it's primarily like a plaster of Paris in that it's a powder and you mix it with a liquid and it eventually, when it sets, it turns into a stone. So once I've got my silicon master, I put an edge around that and then I mix up the hydrostone with water uh, until it's like a, a paste, I guess, and I pour that over, like a runny paste, and I pour that over and let it set for um, a couple of hours. Once it's set, you'll end up with something that looks like this. So this is a stone master of my silicon master. And I keep this one really, really safe. I don't want to break this one because this is what I can make my silicon masters from. Now, if you only needed to make one of these, the first silicon master would probably be all that you need. But because we replicate them all the time, we need to have some additional masters. I'll pop that down really carefully. Then I can pour silicon into that product and I end up with a really flexible silicon mold that looks something like this. And so what I thought I'd show you today is how to make a resin master out of one of those. And I thought we'd just do it in real time. Unfortunately, my camera isn't probably the best for this. I'll, I'll have to do another close up at another stage. But I just thought I'd show you what I'm doing. So I'm just using any old container and a piece of cardboard as a stirring stick. Popping it on the scales, and I'm sorry you can't see that at the moment, but just to give you an idea, I'm using a product called Easy Cast, and you can get it from Art Supplies Places. And I'm just going to measure that out really carefully at a ratio of, um, well, these trays are about 185 grams. So I'm going to use it as a ratio of about 100 to 85. So just bear with me while I measure this out at a ratio of 100 grams part A. Six, seven, 98, 100. I always pop the lids straight back on when I'm doing them because otherwise you may um, put the wrong lid on. If you get the wrong lid on the wrong one, you can cause the entire thing to have a catalytic reaction and set on you. And as these cost about $300 a jar, you really don't want them to be setting too much. So I'm just measuring this one out to 185. Nearly there, there we go, 184, 185, there we go, okay. Then, just stirring it. Now at this stage, you've got a pot life of less than a minute to work with this. It's a really quick set polyurethane. So I'm just gonna stir this up really, really quickly. And let me see, uh, perhaps this one, you might be able to see better. I'll pour into this one. And I will give you a close up of this as it starts to go off, but just, Bear with me as I get this pour in. Now, sometimes you can pour from both ends to get it more level, but I find if you work fairly quickly, you'll find that the master itself takes its own level. And I'll just scrape that all out. And that's all of that into that one mold. Pop the stick back on top on an angle like that so that um, you can get it off later. And then it's got a few air bubbles in it. So I'm just gonna use a flame just to flame out those air bubbles so that we don't get them throughout the, the resin once it's finished. And it's reasonably easy just to flame out any marks that you get in the resin. And what looks really cool is as this starts to set. Now this is gonna take around about three minutes for it to start to set. 
and I'll grab the camera and show you. It's going to be a slightly longer video, this one, but I thought it's really fun to watch these in real time so that you can actually see the reaction that starts to play take place once it starts to set. It's, it's pretty mesmerizing. At the moment, it's a fairly clear liquid. I'll bring the camera over and let you have a look. Excuse me, just grabbing this off the stand and just showing you how it looks fairly clear at the moment. And you'll see in a minute that will start to turn. You'll get some little uh, white marks starting to happen through it. So I'll just hold the camera for the minute, excuse the camera shake and the poor lighting in that, and I'll just keep an eye on it and I'll chat to you a tiny bit while it's starting to set. So then once that's set, it takes about five minutes for the entire thing to be set and then about another 10 minutes before it's ready to be unmolded. And once it's finished, you'll be able to take your silicon master. I'm just gonna keep holding the camera just so I can show you this as it starts to turn. And you can uh, take it, your silicon master here and you'll be able to peel your finished product out of, out of the mold. Now, it doesn't matter what you use. There we go, it's just starting to turn. So I'll give you a close up of that one at the moment. You can see up this end you've got some little bits of white and uh, it's quite fun as, as you watch that to see to see it going white quite quickly and then moving all the way down the master as it starts to set and you'll see it going down the sides at the moment and in a minute it's going to start to go through the middle as well and once it's finished with doing all that the entire thing's going to be white in appearance and then it's going to start to set and as it's doing this if you put your hand over it you'll feel that there's quite a degree of heat that begins to come out of this as it's having a chemical reaction and the reaction is causing the heat making it to set quite quickly and there you go it's just about finished you've got a little bit of clear around these spots but that will set up quite quickly so let me pop the camera back now. I'll pop it back in the stand here for you. Not quite the best position. Sorry about that. Let's see if I can fix it a tiny bit for you. Sorry. It's my birthday next week and everybody's asked what I want and I said I want some good camera equipment so I can make some better videos for you and some good lighting. So once that's set, that's quite hot at the moment. Oh, yeah, I've got it on the wrong angle and you can't quite see. There we go. Let's try that one. And here's a few I've prepared earlier for you. So then you'll be able to, I'll just take, pretend this one's in the mold and pop it back in there so you can get an idea of what it's gonna look like when it pops out. So it's gonna look like this in the mold and then you're just going to, of course I just put this one in there, you're just gonna bend it and that'll all pop out around those plugs. And then what you do with this particular tray is that you'll notice it's got an edge all the way around it. So this is really great if you want to make lipsticks or lip balms. What you do is you pop the 50 or so tubes in the back of it. They become the leg for your tray. And then you can pour your balm over the, over the top. The lip will hold it there so that you don't get any mess on your lip tubes and you can just squeegee it all off once, once you've finished again. And uh, pull them all out and you've got uh, 50 or so done straight away. Now this isn't the end process for these uh, trays. What now has to happen is they're quite sharp along the edge here where it, where it was raised up and came down. And every one of the holes has a little bit of a sharp rough edge on it as well. So you could do this with injection molding. We like to hand make most of our products. And so... What we'll do with this one is take it back to our workroom and we will put it on the lathe and use a drill to drill out every single one of those holes to get rid of the burr and then just run it along the edge so it's nice and smooth. And yes, sometimes the products that you purchase from us do look a little bit handmade, but uh, we make them with a lot of love. We like what we're doing. And so the purpose of this video really was just to share with you how you could work with three different mediums. So the first medium that we used was the uh, stone, which is called Rob Stone. The second medium was silicon, which we made the stretchy molds out of. And then the third medium that we used is the easy cast polyurethane resin. So I hope that gave you a little bit of a taster into some of what goes on behind the scenes at Renaissance Bath and & Body and 
how we love making these things for you. Thanks so much for watching.